what made to you so special? Nothing. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. <laughs> I was from Brooklyn. Brooklyn! Were you scared of it? Okay guys, Frank Style, just a guy from Brooklyn, with the new release of Deadpool and Wolverine, I decided I'm going to do a big spoiler discussion. I want to talk all the spoilers, all the big stuff, all the big cameos. I'm also going to touch on uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s big announcement that he's going to play Dr. Doom, a.k.a. Victor Von Doom. I cannot stress this enough. This is a big warning. This is for people who have already seen Deadpool and Wolverine. This is not a spoiler-free review. This is the exact opposite. This is all the spoilers. So first things first, I want to answer a few questions. Number one, did I like the movie? And the answer is a resounding yes. It's very, very fun, funny, comic book bromance ride kind of a movie it definitely excels from the theater experience this is not something you want to see on a laptop it's not something you want to see off your phone this is something you want to see on the biggest screen possible with a crowd you know you get hyped up question number two and this is a more personal question is it what i personally wanted and the answer is no not exactly I want to see Deadpool in the MCU, interacting with people in the MCU, in that universe. I want to see the X-Men in that universe. But this is not quite that. This is more of a bridge to kind of head in that direction, perhaps. This is also more of a swan song, a kind of love letter to those old Fox movies. The biggest question I would say is, is this movie going to save the MCU? It's a tricky question. So my answer would be somewhere between TBD to be determined and probably not. Does the MCU really need saving? That's the real question. Do I think that the MCU is going to go back to that kind of pre-endgame time? Every movie was a hit. No movie was under a billion dollars. It doesn't need to reach that again. The MCU needs to kind of settle down, concentrate on quality over quantity. I do think that if they can just make solid content, they don't have to make that kind of, you know, home run every movie kind of thing. And now we're going to move on to what I liked about the movie. If you're curious as to how I would rank this movie within the MCU, be on the lookout for my big MCU ranking that includes Deadpool and Wolverine. Disney actually didn't disappoint. They didn't fuck up the R-rated content. Tons of blood, people getting killed left and right. You got curse words plenty. You got all types of jokes, R-rated types of jokes. We'll say that the first Deadpool movie had a little bit more of a sex angle to it, you know, with him and Vanessa. They had scenes of him jerking off to a friggin' unicorn. This did not reach that. This reached more like Deadpool 2 levels, the comedy. And look, I'm going to be the first to admit, uh, I've always found Ryan Reynolds' type of shtick to be hilarious. I find him funny. Even his bad movies, a movie like Green Lantern, or Blade Trinity. I just enjoy the way he does his thing. He did a comedy called Waiting about kind of like an Applebee's type restaurant. Hilarious, one of my favorite comedies. As far as the comedy, him and Hugh Jackman, they have great chemistry here. You'd think they've been making movies for years. Kind of like Attack on the Honda Odyssey, the minivan. I'm not sure where that came from. And then the movie kind of flips it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Honda minivan gets a bump in sales after this movie. Music. Deadpool movies usually deliver great soundtracks. And what they cleverly do is they kind of use a song to kind of, you know, kind of hit off a scene to kind of like 
start off that scene and get you pumped for what they're about to do. This does not disappoint in that way. The, the intro with the bye bye bye, you know, the NSYNC song, great, absolutely hilarious. I, I had a ball with it, the crowd was going nuts. On the other hand, there were a couple of songs that kind of were kind of misses, they kind of didn't work particularly well. The Wolverine variant, the Wolverine dilemma, how do you bring them back without disrespecting the original Wolverine? Not, not exactly cleverly done, but perfect for what this movie is this is a different wolverine he has a past he has a story he has an arc it's different from the original wolverine that they made him a more comic accurate wolverine obviously that's fan service but you know what fox made wolverine movies x-men movies for something like over 20 years they they never had the balls to put him in the suit to put that cowl on this gives you that cow moment where he puts on the cow at the end of the movie. I geeked out a little bit there when I saw that. Basically a montage where Deadpool goes searching for Wolverine to save his universe. You know, for Wolverine fans, for X-Men fans. This was great to see all different types. There was some kind of jokes poking at fans. I I'm one of those fans that always said Hugh Jackman is a little too tall to play Wolverine. If they ever recast him, I want to see a more shorter, stockier. So they kind of did like a height accurate Wolverine and it was pretty damn funny. You have the famous earth tone outfit Wolverine. You know, you had him fighting Hulk and Deadpool in the middle of that. I mean, it's only for a couple of seconds, but it was great just to see that. And then to everybody's surprise, you have the Henry Cavill or as they're calling it, Cavalreen great moment the crowd went nuts the cameo porn yes look that's what they're calling it cameo porn and sometimes it works sometimes it don't in this movie it really really works this big one was chris evans everybody thinks he's like gonna be captain america and instead he's johnny storm from the old fantastic four movies and seeing him you know light up say flame on awesome awesome Great moment. I have Jennifer Garner coming back for Elektra. She looks great. I mean, if anything, she looks fantastic. Did I want to see Daredevil? Obviously I did. Channing Tatum trying to get his own Gambit movie. He plays Gambit. The whole thing with his accent and everything, he nails it. Comic book accurate outfit, the glowing cars. People were going crazy on this. But for me, the big one, the huge one, the one that really made me, my eyes light up, was the one that I just did not see coming, has nothing to do with Fantastic movies or X-Men movies, and that was Blade. Wesley Snipes coming back to play Blade. Oh my God, that was a really huge moment. You take that out of this movie, and this movie just considerably drops in my opinion besides these big cameos you did have some like x-men roles some x-men guys who came back you had some you know guys like toad you had saber tooth you had pyro they were actually casted by the people who played those roles back in those x-men movies and then they had this other kind of even lesser group x-men and marvel characters that you could recognize from older movies, but uh, they were recasted by people that I, I had no idea who these people were, particularly Juggernaut. They used the Juggernaut from the X-Men The Last Stand, which was even more confusing. Why, why, why go that way when in Deadpool 2 you just had a way better version of Juggernaut? Action was really, really good. If you are one of those people that, you know, a fan that wants to see Deadpool fight Wolverine, they have multiple fights in this movie. They even have a fight in the you know, Honda Odyssey that, that I was talking about. And an entire fight inside a minivan, which is a joke in itself. But more importantly, these cameo characters, they got you know their moments to fight, to see Blade, to see you know Gambit, Elektra do their thing. It was important to somebody like me. Because if not, they really are just quick cameos. And so we're going to move from what I like, the positives, to what I didn't like. Seen in the first act where Deadpool is interviewed for the Avengers by Happy Hogan. 
It totally took me out of the movie. It was confusing. The jokes were funny. So confused. I'm like, are the Avengers actually in the X-Men universe as well in Deadpool's universe? And I went looking for an explanation after seeing the movie. And the explanation was he, at one point, he went because he was going through this kind of midlife crisis. And he went like at a time before Thanos. So it was like a de-aged Happy Hogan. I, I hate that. Like none of that works at all for me. The story, the plot, it's it's not very good. It's, it's got some lazy writing. It's 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 got some bad moments. At one point, Cassandra Nova wants to give Deadpool and Wolverine a way to get back to the TVA, get out of that, you know, limbo universe, and she uses a sling ring. A sling ring you know, is not, you can't travel through universes with it. Not sure if he can go to the TVA. Definitely a big question mark for me. Didn't like that. Kind of lazy. Uh, it was pointed out that it had two Infinity Stones. I don't remember if it did. If it did, I don't know if that would make a difference, especially with the TVA. In the TVA, Infinity Stones are used as like paperweights. They don't really count. The Vanessa storyline is so weak. All of a sudden, after he saves her life, she breaks up with him. Why? First two movies were, comp they were like love stories all about Vanessa with all these great, like, kind of romantic moments. This really kind of just kind of shoved her to the side. Like, yeah, you're there, but we'll just make it that you guys broke up. I, I, I did not, I was not buying any of that bread. The ending was pretty meh. It was, it was okay when you compare it to certain, you know, a lot of MCU movies and Fox movies that had great, you know, big epic endings. Yes, it was pumped up with music and all types of stuff to kind of, you know, kind of wow you, but I noticed it. The villains. I saw every season of Succession. Matthew McFadden is an awesome actor. You could have used this guy, you know, in such a great way. He played a very, very small role. Emma Corrin as Cassandra Nova, okay. She's not the worst like MCU villain I've seen. You know, she did pretty well. The kind of twist with her powers where she could kind of read your mind by physically putting her hand through it. That was weird stuff. The Deadpool variants. Uh, look, everybody wanted to see this. Lady Deadpool was spoiled before entering the theater. So, you know, I did like Lady Deadpool. Obviously, I know who played Lady Deadpool before going in. Dogpool was great. I, you know, I have a love for animals. So that dog was adorable. The huge, you know, pile of Deadpool variants to show up at the end of the movie was okay. This multiverse thing, it's it's been done to death. T.J. Miller, he plays Weasel in the first two Deadpool movies, and if you didn't know, he helped. Ryan Reynolds make that first Deadpool movie. And I think it shows because he wasn't as involved in the second one. And you can see that the second one fell off a little. Already got into some legal problems. I think some stuff from his past came out. During the filming of Deadpool 2, they, I hear him and Ryan Reynolds had became, they created a little bit of a beef. Hope is, is that maybe he can get some sort of redemption later, the same way James Gunn did, maybe. I, I do think him missing from the movie hurts the movie you had cable you had domino and fire fist they were important characters that were missing who kind of created a family at the end of that second deadpool movie and they're all gone you try watching deadpool 2 and then going straight to this movie you're gonna notice it the one person who could play victor von doom <laughs> There's really not much to know. It's just an announcement. You know, you have people all type predicting all types of stuff. Just so you know, there are fanboys fighting on social media. Is it going to be a variant? Is it just RDJ playing another character? And we're supposed to just ignore the fact that it's a different, you know, the same actor. I'm not buying any of that, Brad. I, I think I, if, if you ask me, I, they're bringing him so they can kind of throw some sort of twist. But really, nobody knows. And, and that's, the, that's the true answer. Nobody knows. Is it desperation? 
I don't know, maybe. Um, the Marvel's not, you know, hitting them out the park anymore like they used to. One of my feelings is, is if you were going to do this and reveal him as Doctor Doom, why not do it in a movie? Why not do it as a big reveal, a twist, where he takes off the mask in front of the Avengers who are fighting him, and they see that it's Tony Stark, and 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 just think think about that kind of you know the, the gravity of that kind of situation. All right, I do think that they kind of dropped the ball by making the big announcement. Maybe they felt like they couldn't hide it. I, I don't know. If they do this right, it, it could be some really great storytelling. And there's the opposite of that. He's older. He doesn't look anything like Victor Von Doom from the comics. And, and I know that's kind of a little bit of a cop out. If he's going to be a huge villain, like Thanos level villain, you do want somebody a little younger who's going to be there, you know, just like Thanos was kind of pulling the strings for the first few eight, nine movies and then have him come out. Uh, but I guess they're not doing that because they've already announced that he's going to have his own kind of movie. I don't know what they're going to do. And, and, and that's the bottom line. No one does. People are going to come out and say they know what they're going to do or they're going to predict it. It's just a prediction. If they do it right, it could be something really big. If they do it wrong, it's going to look like desperation and it's going to fail. So bottom line for all this stuff, look, I'm a sucker for fan service and movies of the past, but at some point Marvel Studios will have to drop all this nostalgia, have to drop all this multiverse stuff, all the cameo porn, and deliver new and exciting ideas, characters. They're going to have to fill these roles with new people, and those new people are going to have to carry those movies the same way Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. and all the other guys did. The MCU's got his work cut out for it. They have to, you know, continue to not be afraid to put in R-rated content, you know, throw in some horror, throw in some other stuff. If they do, they're going to attract different people. They're going to attract different crowds, and I think it's going to pay off. I'm its harshest critic, the MCU, but I'm also always rooting for them. I never root for them to fail. So guys, from the BK, from the city that never sleeps. See my face peace. in lights, so my name on marquees found down on Broadway. Even if it ain't all it seems, I got a pocket full of dreams, baby. I'm from New York, concrete jungle.